Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new build video. Today we are in the Maya, reinforcing an existing structure, specifically this air raid shelter that we have here. It's attached to a little house here in the Maya. So we've talked about this one on stream and it's been an interesting location to building, though rather challenging. So, let's jump in and take a look at the place, shall we? So, uh, we are down in the mire, as I say, and this location is one that I had no idea was even here. It's sort of over on the back side of a hill, so it's kind of hard to come across unless you're properly exploring down the side of the mire. But uh, one of my stream regulars let me know this place was here, told me about the bunker down the back end of the mire. And uh, unfortunately, I can't for the life of me remember which one it was, so if you, uh, if it's you I'm talking about, do shout up in uh, the comments and let me know. But, this is where we are over in the mire, pretty much straight across from Haven Church, not too far from Riley Clay's bunker. We've got Thunder Mountain Power Plant up there at the top, and you can see we're just a little bit to the northwest of this two deer on the map. So you can head out from Riley Clay's bunker, it's the easiest way to find it. Hopper's Ferry down there. So it's uh, well off the beaten track this, as I say, on the back side of a hill, so it's kind of hard to stumble across, which is cool. You want to be away from everybody else. With it being an existing structure, it's a little temperamental to work with, if you uh, grossly understate it, to be honest. But uh, we're going to primarily be focusing on reinforcing the existing structure and making it a little bit more defensible. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of mark out where I want the main junk walls to be. In hindsight, I should probably have pushed these out a little bit further away from the main structure, and then I could have made a bit more use of uh, the space outside. But it does work, it's quite cool. Looks much more manageable if it's a bit smaller in some ways. We are on one heck of a slope here, unfortunately, though, which does present certain challenges. Namely that, obviously, I can't just snap these fences together. You see that one was floating way off in the air, so... The simplest way to get these in place without snapping them and having them sort of close together is just to flip them around. So, there we go. Alternating the directions the fences are facing, and we have a basic line in place where we want the wall to go. We'll be taking most of these out and replacing them, but it'll give us a good guide to get going with. So, it'll be nice to have this one double height, but that's not going to happen, so we'll drop in one of my favourites for building walls with, this huge shelf. So it provides a big, broad, and quite tall obstacle to any attackers, whilst at the same time being reasonably able to sink into the ground, which is quite cool. And um, reasonably shallow, reasonably thin, which is very, very helpful for building walls as well, especially on a slope like this. But we do have a gap here, because the ground sticks out a bit, so we're going to need to plug this up. Stash boxes are always handy for that. They fit in quite a number of small gaps. You can uh, re-angle them a little bit and do various bits and pieces with them and plug the gap in a nice junky kind of a way. Plus there's quite a lot of options under there. And if you happen to be standing near one and need a stash box, it's convenient as well. So we're going to use the uh, concrete tyres that were added in the Atomic Shop a while back. They come and go quite a lot, but they are very, very handy to have these things. And we've got a little hole down here. Nobody's getting through, obviously, but it provides a nice little spot to pile up a bit more junk and make the thing look a little bit more solid. This one in here. There we go. Another one on top. Eventually, we want to stop jumping around. There we go. And the next one on there. Round it off with a different textured one on the top. That'll do it. Yeah, man. There we go. So... Jumping around the corner to this next one, I did actually change the fence on the right, but much later on, so we'll get to that when we get to it. We're going to take this fence out and block the gap in this occasion with a dumpster, which is going to present the first of a number of occasions where we have to deal with the slope that we're on. You can see, I nudge this more or less into place where I want it, and that is utterly ridiculously floating. It is kind of a nightmare in 76. I do. Uh, Miss the good old days of Fallout 4 where I could just sink things into the ground, but we have to work with what we've got. So, we're going to use stash boxes again, just drop a couple underneath. That should provide a little bit of support. Still kind of floats, the stash box obviously is still on a slope, but because it's that much smaller, the grass and the lighting kind of hides it a lot better. Especially once we drop this one in on front of it, get a bit more solid base to sit on. Get the heights right, they'll generally sit, well, various objects will generally sit quite nicely on top of those boxes, so... That does work quite well, which is helpful. There we go. 
but it's still a little bit floaty, but at a glance you won't really notice it. And as we go around, we'll be sort of disguising the places where things float as much as possible to make it look a little better. Before we get any further along with this wall, I want to figure out where I want the front gate to be. It'll be a bit more of a central point to work off. And this is more or less where it's going to be. I'm going to put a guard post in first. Again, it gives you another sort of jumping off point for the wall. And it's good to have guard posts next to gates. It uh, creates a nice complete look there. These tall ones are particularly handy because they're one of the few objects that legitimately do sink into the ground. It will work with uneven ground quite nicely there. Nice and easy. Some free atoms are always welcome as well. Weak this a little bit. Try and get the posts on the corners lined up a bit more with where I want the fence to go. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a junk wall after all. But that looks about right. More adjustments. I get rudely interrupted by Radrich. Those of you who've been following me on Twitter may know I had a few issues with my uh, PC over the weekend, uh, specifically to do with the sound, and that's why I got caught out by that Radrich, because I couldn't hear him coming. Still, it's only a Radrich or something. So, sort of lining up with the corner of the guard post here. I want the gate over a little bit further because it's just a little bit too close to the tall section of the guard post there if you got it right up against it. Leaves it feeling a little too narrow and enclosed. So push it over a little bit and plug the app with a couple of filing cabinets. These things are much more agreeable than they were in Fallout 4. They've snapped together quite nicely and they've got much smaller collision boxes which is really nice so you can put things together more easily. My gate just opened on its own and in wandered a bleeding rad roach. Didn't know they could do this, it makes putting a gate in rather pointless, but, uh... Yeah. A rad roach just opened the gate. Tiniest rad roach I've ever seen as well. Make matters even worse. Makes it a bit pointless as a defence, really, doesn't it? I don't know. Weird stuff goes on in this game sometimes. Anyhow. Let's plug this gap up on the other side of the guard post with a few tyres. Concrete filled tyres again are very, very handy. Nice little stack in there. That's good. And used to use something similar in Fallout 4 to uh, support things and plug gaps with it. It was very, very handy back then as well. I had to use mods to get them there. So I've snapped an extra fence here onto the uh, one that we've just pulled out because I want to be able to snap this fence back in once I've done putting some support underneath this end of it. So having that fence to the right will allow me just to snap it straight back. But we've got to find something that's going to fit in underneath the leg here, which is quite the problem. And I'm going to try stash boxes again. This one's uh, one of the boxes from Nuclear Winter. Unfortunately, it's a little too small. Not quite lined up either. Yeah, not quite right there. Shove that back out again. So, we'll try something else once I've dealt with the Myalogs that are now coming to play. Sushi for dinner, apparently. There we go. Steel one clips through, but makes it look like it's actually connected, which is way, way better. Take that spare fence out, and we'll plug it up with something different. These little, uh, sort of, half-sized, I suppose, concrete barricades are really, really handy for creating walls with and sort of texturing things up a little bit. Unfortunately here, this one is still floating, so we'll have to do something about that in a moment. There we go, take it out, we'll put some posts in instead. Apologies for the slightly weird colours, by the way. It went dark and I hadn't really noticed, so we fixed it in post. <laughs> but, so, yes, as concrete things do kind of sink in a little bit. Not so much when you're on a slope as blatant as this one, but they are quite handy for hiding things like floating objects. So, very useful for that and a bit of extra texture as well. But, we've got a stash box in the form of that uh, cabinet there. I'm just going to drop a bookcase on the top. The white picket fences, by the way, are also Atomic Shop added. They're basically the same place as the regular fences, but you need to pick them up in the Atomic Shop when they come back, if you would like them. Quite handy. And we'll come back and tidy the side up in a moment. But this, in hindsight, was probably the best option all along for fencing this place off. I don't know if I, I'd done it all the way around if it would look good, but... The result here is quite good anyway. So I don't want the stairs on this, not least of all because I have to stick them outward in order to get this thing to place. So we're going to arrange to have one of these ones without the stairs but with no support, which requires a little technique. 
picked up from no respawns. That is to pull this stuff out of the way again. We put the initial set down with the stairs on, and then snap the piece that we want onto the side of it, and then snap an extra set that doesn't have stairs on next to that. Now, take the one we actually want off, middle one. Yep, take the stairs away. We can now snap this middle one back in, and take the end one back off, and there we have it. Just sat on its own with no stairs. It's a bit of a palaver, but it does work. Good shout there on no response part. Not something I use very often or particularly want to use a lot of, but it is uh, an extra option when you're building junk walls, which is always handy. So this went very, very well. Drop the ice machine in there. It's a nice, broad, flat and relatively shallow object. It's really good for defensive walls and junk walls, that sort of thing. As is the magazine rack, which fits perfectly in that little gap. Very, very nice. So, these... Um, Wall, perimeter wall uh, frames, I think they're called. Big metal thing we're looking at anyway. Um, they're supposed to have wall pieces snapped to them, and as you can see, it's willing to snap to it. For some reason, it wants a foundation now. I don't know if it's just because I'm on a really steep slope or not, or if something got changed with Wastelanders maybe on the sly. But uh, either way, it's not cooperating right now. I should be able to snap wall straight to it. As I can't, we'll go with the old floating wall technique, which I seem to be using quite a bit lately. So we'll have to line up the foundation and follow it around. Snap a foundation on that we actually want on the inside, which is quite fortunate it worked here at all. Snap a roof on top, snap the walls. There we go. Now we take the roofs off. We have a floating wall around here. Don't take off the stuff we don't need now. Let's pick it in the right order. There we go. One floating wall that looks like it's attached to the uh, perimeter frame there. Which it should be, but for some reason, it doesn't really want to play ball today. Speaking of things that don't want to play ball, most of this build springs to mind. Uh, this particular defensive wall, the concrete walls, are under the defences tab. They're often quite good for sinking into the ground, but something about the surface of the ground here, or the way that the surface works, just didn't want to cooperate. That was about the only place I could get one in. I don't like overdoing it with those anyway. They're just a bit too uniform. I like that things a bit more mixed up. But uh, that was about the only place I could get it to sit, so I have to work with what we've got available there. So, drop this guard post in, get it to play nice with the edge of this sort of lip here. Put it forward. And we'll get some concrete tyres in here. Cement tyre wall. Again, this was a bit temperamental, and uh, particularly with the slope, obviously, it ends up floating again. Like, just about everything. But we'll conceal that later on. It looks quite good in the end, so... No major worries. For now, I'll close this little gap up. And I'll just stash box in there. I'm going to change my mind in just a moment. Good start, but... Let's mix it up a little bit. So, somewhere here, there's a small cabinet. It's going to look way better if it's on the bottom rather than the top. Fits nicely in the gap. That on the top. We have a usable stash box for whoever's uh, on guard duty, and the gap is nicely plugged up as well. There's a nice view out to uh, defend the camp on the side as well, which is quite cool. A little gas sign in there doing good work as it usually does, very, very handy for junk walls. Since we need a toilet in somewhere, I'm going to try and cram this uh, porter cabin in just by the gap here. I actually ended up putting it in the wrong way around, which is somewhat annoying. I have to change it during decoration. But, we'll be accessing it underneath the frame here, as it won't quite snap underneath. Go in through the side there. Just about work, we'll have to put some supports underneath. On balance, if I'd use the sort of raidery one that uh, I've got somewhere, I think it's in the Messiah Instructors tab as well, it might be appliances actually. It's a little more reasonable about sinking into the ground, although you have to build steps up to it. But, I thought we'd use the port cabin for a change. Wouldn't have had the floating issue with the other one, so I suppose that would have been a bonus. But, we we'll stuck a stash box underneath this uh, tool case here. Yeah. And rather than fluff around trying to get anything else under there, I think I'll just hide this. So we'll just get one of these concrete barricades again, the guard posts. We'll just nudge it up there. There we go. Not too obviously floating, and it conceals the fact that the... Uh, 
porter cabin basically is floating. So we've got some half height concrete tyres here, jagged cement tyre wall it's called, and uh, it's a little temperamental this one, it wants to sit nice and low but as soon as you hit uh, place it just pops straight back up again. Fortunately I managed to get it to a position where it didn't look like it was floating too obviously and was kind of nicely supporting the front of the guard post here. It was quite successful, I was quite pleased with how that worked out. The background to this larger set of uh, cement tyres, which can nudge a white picket fence up to the front of it and they'll conceal quite nicely the fact that it's floating. The good thing about these is even though they are floating, they look like they're meant to be, so it doesn't cause too much of a problem. Moving back around, plug up a few more gaps. Another cement guard post there. I'm going to use a tyre here as well. Unfortunately, the options for doing this are a little on the limited side, but it does work quite well with a little bit of... Uh, patience but tricks to try and avoid using the same thing sort of with too much repetition too many of the same thing too close together if you mix it up a little bit you wind up with a bit more variety it looks a little more sort of coupled together which is cool so moving on inside i'm not going to do a great deal in here you see that roof just at the top there causes a bit of problem down this back end of the build kitchen end things have a tendency to jump up on top of it which then means you can't get back at them because um they're height difference between that inner roof there and the actual roof outside is higher than most of the appliances so if anything winds up up there you're not getting it back. I currently have a uh, random cooking station wedged in there that I can't get at so that will sort of get it back when I move camp but until then <laughs> you have to be a bit careful with what you place underneath it. Sink wanted to play ball okay getting it in front of the window unfortunately was a no-go but we're going to fall back on an old Fallout 4 technique again to get a lot of stuff in here because this floor is very, very awkward to get stuff to place on. Specifically, we're going to rug glitch it. The technique's exactly the same as it was in Fallout 4. Just stick a rug down, place your object on the top of that, make sure it's actually sat on the rug so that it's connected, pick up the rug, and we move the lot. Unfortunately, unlike Fallout 4, we can't push things into walls doing this, but uh, in terms of moving them around, a lot of the time it does still work, so it's... Not quite got the same functionality, but still handy on occasion. I wanted to use a slightly more scrappy looking weapons workbench here. Try and get a few um, crafting stations in. Didn't manage to get the full set in here, but I've got most of the big ones in, which is the main thing. Unfortunately, the scrappy looking one doesn't really fit in there. For some reason it just doesn't want to play ball because it's floating. But this big solid blue one is just fine, apparently. So going have to hang off the edge a little bit, as I can't set it close to the curved wall, which is somewhat sad, but we'll make do. And an armour workbench under the sort of blacked out window there, but again, we're going to have to use the rug glitch, because it's not going to play ball. When I jumped onto the decoration phase, I realised that because the floor's wooden in here, you're actually better off in some ways using the sort of brown mats. The door mats rather than these blue ones. I've used these blue ones for years, which is why I defaulted to them. But the brown ones blend into the floor a bit more because obviously the wooden floor is brown. So if that's something you're concerned with and you want to hide your rugs, it's a good way of doing it to make them a little less conspicuous. Sort of thing. Occurred to me about halfway through the decoration phase of this, which was a little late, but better late than never. So for the last thing we're going to put in before we head to the tour, instead of watching me struggle with this for the next couple of hours, is an improvised kind of bed. Because there's not much space in here. There is actually a sleeping bag in situ already, but I'm fairly convinced you pick up diseases from sleeping in that. So I'm just going to stack a few mattresses, spin them around, because I can get hold of the bottom from the other side, and just get it as close into the corner as I possibly can. Which is not as close as I'd like, and it's kind of a challenge. But uh, we'll just micro adjust it as much as possible to get it as tucked far back as we can there we go. it's not too bad and we'll jump on and have a look at the finished decorated tour because there's a lot more of that between now and then so by the power of editing let's have a look around this place make our way up the hill We've got a reasonably imposing fortification there i think let me keep most things out or hold them off for a while while they're under fire anyway I do like the overall look of this, I have to admit. It was a total pain in the neck to build in, and around, mind you. But uh, the results are pretty solid. Very, very scrappy, junky looking thing, which I really, really like.
I do like that we've got the uh, destroyed truck there as well. I wouldn't mind access to a few more things like that. I know we've got a couple, but a few more bits like that would be cool for sort of exterior decoration. A somewhat defunct um, oxygen cycling aircon apparatus there. This little field here in front of the house right next to the air raid shelter bunker thing is already here. It's planted with potatoes, there's a few carrots there as well as the corn. Quite useful to have nearby, it saves you a lot of hassle with planting your own crops, so it's one of the better things about this location. And that really cool shot as you come around that tree as well. <laughs> Random little picnic site there. Stacked a few bits on the uh, ventilation system there, just to close up the gap. Come back around. Nothing too obviously floating. Got a bit of a gap under the uh, coolant sign there, but definitely no creatures going to be getting under it. Joys are working on a slope. Added a few bits and pieces in front of that uh, warehouse wall as well that's floating there just to give it a bit more texture, as well as a few more bits around the gate. And a punji board, seeing as apparently the gate can't even keep a rad roach out. Head on round. I do like the view from this guard post, sort of straight down the hill there. If anything comes running up there towards the camp, it's uh, nice and easy to defend from up here, which is pretty cool. That worked out quite well. Got a power armor station tucked in by the kitchen window there. Struggling to think where I was going to make that fit, but uh, it went in that gap quite nicely, cooperated quite well, which is cool. A peek in the window there. There we are, our little water cabin. Got to have the essentials. Took a few turrets onto the wall as well. It is the mire after all, and there are a few less than pleasant denizens around here. Walls at the top there, nice and tall, just to make sure that anything that's got the high ground there isn't going to have too much of an advantage. Take a look around the side. There's a couple of fire barrels in here. They're already in place when you arrive, which is quite cool. Wouldn't mind having access to these to build with either. Well, I thought we'd close this area off a little bit, give it a little bit more of a separate room feel for the bedroom there. So we've got a couple of bookshelves on top of each other, just to uh, create a reasonably solid object at the foot of the bed. Another shelf. That shelf's uh, aggressively rug glitched in, shall we say. The other bits and pieces of decoration around. Sofa and some of the lights are already in as well, but I've topped them up. Squeeze a couple of workbenches in here. Nudge around the corner and look at the little kitchen area. Unfortunately, the refrigerator doesn't actually work, but... I managed to squeeze the Nuka-Cola chiller in at the end. That actually was reasonably cooperative. It went in the gap really nicely. It's just about the perfect size, which is quite cool. Squeeze on back around. Put a few posters in, a few uh, cardboard standees, things like that, just to give it a bit more of a lived-in look. It looks distinctly abandoned when you first arrive here. Would have liked to put some stuff down on the floor, but unfortunately it's way too uneven for that. I tried to glitch a door frame in as well, but that wasn't playing ball either, which was a little sad, but it is what it is. By the way, I do hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gents. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me, it's always very much appreciated. Social media links down in the description as well, if you want to catch up with me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. And if you want to catch one of the live streams, it's a really good time to hang out and play a bit of Fallout 76. Make sure you hit that bell notification icon. Now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.